I was a senior in high school and we were ditching school and were in a park that had an archery range. And there were a bunch of young kids practicing their archery skills with hunting arrows. And an arrow went over a bale of hay, through a chain link fence, through a tree and actually hit me in the eye. I do think about it every day. When there's absolutely nothing wrong with you, and then all of a sudden, you're not the same. Now you have something that makes you a little bit different, that you're not just all the same as everybody else. Today, I can see light and dark. Like if I close my right eye, I can tell that there's a very bright light right there. Um, I can see the outline of you, um, but wouldn't be enough that if I lost the vision of my right eye, I could function. Since that time, other things have happened to my eye. The most difficult of which was my cornea started to swell and they hurt a lot. It's one of those pains that you can't do anything. You can't, you can't even think about anything because it hurts so much. I've had a lot of eye surgeries. I've had responsibility for the OR. I've spent a lot of time in operating rooms, but I was scared. I was very, very scared. I was cold. I was shivering. I was very frightened. The nurse puts her hand on the shoulder and says, Nancy, I'm gonna be right here. I'll be here when you go to sleep. I'll be here through the entire thing. And I'll be right here when you wake up. So you don't need to be watching out. I will be watching out for you. It made such a difference. Just that little thing that she probably says to every single patient made all the difference in the world. The big takeaway for me is we need to think more carefully about what we're expecting of patients when we send them home. Before my corneal transplant, I wish somebody had said, this is what your eye's gonna look like. I wish I'd had a list of the prescriptions I was going to have afterwards. I wish I'd had some time to think about what that was going to do and what I, so I could be prepared for when I came home. Because I wasn't. It made me understand what we ask patients to do. That they don't necessarily think they have the same rights and abilities to say no. And we need to make sure that we let them know they do have that right. I was talking to a patient yesterday and she said, I hate when I lie here and they come in and there are eight people circling my bed and they're all standing up looking down on me. And she said, I feel like I'm about 12 inches tall. We have to not just invite them, but we have to assure them, you know what, you do have a right. You should know who those people are. CI care works because everybody does it. And it's consistent from the housekeeper who walks in and is gracious and knocks on the door to the person who is in the hallway who's passing somebody else's tray and looks up and smiles at you to the nurse who exits courteously and says, is there anything else I can do with you? It touches you as a human being. CI Care connects people to people. You are two people connected by caring for each other, and that's pretty fabulous. We think of patients as being visitors in our house, when really, we're visitors in their life. They need us more than ever. They need us more than ever.